and between Biu Biu and aiming. But there was a lot of positives for OMG. And I think coming into this game, we might see them maybe like, you know, look to try and change the draft just a little bit. Yep, we see the Ezreal ban there this time around. So they're not going to have to deal with that pesky, squirmy little lady carry. Yeah, and a big thing that jumps to me right away is the Nidalee and Renekton on the side of OMG. So we already know where their focus is going to be setting up that combo, hopefully landing those spears, trying to accelerate their Nidalee. Still on the opposite side, Gwen Lee Sid. I mean, those are two of the strongest champions you can get in this meta on this patch. You have Varus down in the bot lane that somehow made it all the way through to pick five as well. So I think BLG have a lot of power picks. They have a lot of good uh, things to feel good about. And for OMG, I think we're going to once again look to see them get an early lead, see how they can transition that. And then especially how they play team fights. You have both Nidalee and uh, Tristana coming out, so you do have a lot of range to put all that damage. But on the opposite side, you're going up against Aiming Svaris. We saw how good he was at positioning in the last game. So we're going to be looking to him once again to have a stellar performance in game two. Look towards the bot side for BLG. And for OMG, they just need to try and get Cream ahead again yes he was miles ahead in that last game but the exhaust from the side of blg were just crippling him so so much this time around he does not have to worry about that as no one has picked up an exhaust and uh, abel has swapped out his exhaust for a cleanse so respecting the lockdown that can come out from a leona and varus I mean, right, if at any point in time Cold's making a roam, he's left alone, aiming's level 6, PB God's level 6, they're making some kind of cheeky plane of brush or looking for an engage from, from afar, he could be in a lot of trouble, so it makes a lot of sense coming out from him. We see both teams getting off uh, D boards in the enemy jungle. For OMG, it's on BLG's red buff. We just saw BLG getting that ward onto Krug, so trying to see where the other junglers are starting. For BLG, they have this Volley Bear coming out, so is a jungler who can be an aggressive ganker, an aggressive skirmisher in the early game. Maybe look to get off some ganks mid around Zika. You do have this very uh, strong early game champion in the Lee Sin coming out. When for OMG, we already highlighted it, Nidalee Renekton up in the top side. New gonna struggle a little bit early on in this 1v1, but still when it comes to that 2v2, I think OMG are feeling pretty good about themselves. Yeah, the, the Nidalee Renekton combination is just a, a tale as old as time. It is uh, just something that you can and will have to, if you want to make it work uh, in the early game, be aggressive on. So see how they're able to make that combination work. Is Cream going to be able to push in Zika? Pretty much the standard of what's going to happen to the Lee Sin in the first few levels until he gets some, you know, uh, points into his W. He's able to kind of hit that back wave very, very much uh, and, and take down the damage onto it but we just talked about the nidalee renekton combination aki has roamed himself up to this top side there is no flash onto biu biu and they're just waiting for this next wave to kind of come in on top of this they need the level two here from new before they can really go for anything there it is flash forward gonna get the spear and that is first blood for omg an interesting adaptation coming out from aki with his oh. bad thing is this is getting pretty close to a solo kill on on both sides honestly but we are going to see Cream just be able to back off. Weiwei coming in for the gank, though. Weiwei coming in. Cream going to walk face first. Oh, immediately walks up and flashes himself out. Cream thought about it, then eventually dropped the ward and saw a big old angry bear running at him. But great start for OMG. Yes, they lose the flash in that uh, mid lane, but you're still pretty happy with the result. The fact that you got the kill up on the top side. Yeah, and Aki changing his path, right? Because we saw Biu Biu trying to stack up that wave, get that pushed in, be able to back off safely, maybe even get a, a nice early reset coming out. But instead, Aki going straight from his red buff into a level two gank top. But still, BLG able to utilize that top pressure with Gwen coming off the TP. He's going to be able to take away top side. So that'll look for that invade because he did use the, the plant for vision. BLG on the opposite side trying to punish OMG as well by taking away both scuttles from OMG, but Cream hovers over. Him and Aki make their way down the bottom lane of OMG, also trying to make sure that Aki's able to get that, but way, way. I, I'm, I think this would be a little bit too ambitious coming in at level four. You don't exactly know where Aki is. You know he's on his bottom side juggle. They actually pinged out his raptors thinking he's there, so yeah, I like that they end up not going for this one. Yeah, again, I think it was just a, they didn't have full information on Aki and where exactly the Nidalee was. So if he's a right over the wall there, you land one good spear, he jumps in on top of you. That's probably two kills going over the side of OMG. So very uh, low reward for a very high risk. And uh, yes, you did give over your blue buff as a Nidalee uh, to the side of BLG, but you 
you you got a kill, you made it work for your team, and now you can see the kind of the pressure shift in that top side. And speaking of pressure, we can actually see there the push coming in here for Abel and Cold, as the Tristana will just have natural push with the passive off her W. Yeah, and you know, it looks like Aki gonna try and play around that is new, doing a good job of making sure that Bubu stays in this lane can't go for any type of reset but even then that would have been a really awkward reset to go for with the fact that you don't have your tp available so bb just trying to get this wave cleared out new now in, in a fantastic position after being able to reset get that er that early long sword and right now just going for short trades don't want to go for anything extended up against bb whose mana bar is getting pretty low so he definitely wants to hope for some kind of reset at some point and omg making the way back up towards the top side clearing out some vision we see cream uh, going up there as well so we know the plan stays the same for the side of omg the setup is still there but way way now clearing his krugs would be here to cover if any shenanigans broke out and you're looking at the blg roster you know we have a little bit of time before really anything is going to break out and just no, as we I don't. say that we see is that okay, yes, coming in he should be fine but this BLG roster does feel like, comparative to Spring to now, with the changes they brought in with Viu Viu Weiwei and, of course, uh, PP God, it feels like these were all improvements across the board, and it feels like this was a, a very conscious decision for BLG to say, we need to be top 10 at minimum, we need to be in playoffs, and right now, it, it hasn't 100% gelled, but it hasn't been bad for them so far this split. But we get to see the parts of them that do gel with Viu Viu and Weiwei once again looking for this top side 2v2 level 6 on both top laners. Level 6 on both top fighters and Aki just, yeah, pop the, pop the question mark frog. He does not want to be a part of that as they all just kind of back themselves away. But BLG, I like the idea as we see PP Cons just getting punted around the place as uh, aiming puts down a lot of damage onto Cold. And this is kind of just what's going to happen. You pick the Leona, the Alistair's just a natural counter to you in that regard. So you can just keep putting down the, uh, ooh, as I say that, PP God might be in a little bit of trouble as Cold has to flash himself away. There's the cleanse, there's the jump back on top of it. One more auto attack would do it, he would be killed. There it is. And a punt back here as Abel. Oh, <laughs> no! Oh, oh that's tragic. Oh, that's a bit tragic. Abel, not judging the uh the the gap very well on his mouse and the uh the wall and ends up dying so one for one on each side but aiming is able to deny the wave as well so overall win for the side of blg see way making his way down forcing aki to show as well and yeah that was just a bit unfortunate coming out for able still all summoners burnt down in the bottom lane, so I wouldn't be surprised to see some repeat ganks coming out. I think especially for Weiwei, it'd be good to come down and hit on this bottom lane. You do have your flash available as well, so very easy flash done can come out for that side. Is PB God just going to help uh, Zika secure Pryo in mid? Harold is up in about 30 seconds. We see the pro view now of how this one go. Oh no. Oh no, we're going to watch Abel's pro view. This is... It's, it, look, it's good for the moment. They're trading very nicely. They do get cold out. You're thinking, cool, like, we got this. He does get a little bit shallow with his jump. I would have preferred to see him go for maybe behind Leona. And then he's got the reset. You're thinking he should be fine. And then oh, he just clicks on himself. That's so tragic. Yeah, did, did click the long way over the wall. They tried to go for it, but still didn't work out. And, I mean, he did, he did get PP God in return, but not worth for the side of blg and blg actually already reallocating their lanes having zika cover down in bot lane so they don't lose out on any cs or exp so they can send their bottom lane mid to take herald this is something pretty interesting that we don't really see out of any teams but omg want to fight omg do want to fight you see pp got not level six yet so does not have the solar flare oh. as he goes it up the back side nice target selection here for omg and aki gets himself the kill on top of the virus they trade out their support but you will take that fight any day of the week Weiwei and pp god have to run for the hills and they also got the tp out of zika and they were able to stop the tp as well so the tp from zika was not able to finish you can imagine it was just an explosive bomb from abel and they're going to be maybe going for this bot lane dive, as you can see, maybe lands the Q. Yes, he does. Resonating strike, and Zika picks up a solo, says, that's for stopping my TP. And this has not quite got done yet. As, oh my god, BLG come back in to steal the Rift Herald and take it up. Yes, they lose a kill in the process, but Biu Biu can just get himself out, can get himself home, and that is a successful re-engage for BLG. Uh, so in the end, I guess we had it two for two, right? There's a lot of shenanigans going on all around the map. 
Uh, like you said, going back, Zika channeling his teleport right in front of Abel, so just using that Buster Shot, pushing him out of the way, but I imagine that's why Abel was so far overextended, and Zika's eventually able to find his way onto Abel, get that push in bot lane, just dive him under turret, so... You know, we come out of this gold pretty much even, but still BLG are the ones with Rift, Herald, 4 OMG, all the kills are onto your Nidalee, so I think that feels pretty good. Aki gonna be able to do a lot of work, but on the opposite side, we're getting a nice, a nice spread of kills. Zika picking up that one, aiming as well, ahead in both CS and having that kill of his own. BLG gonna instantly transition into their next neutral objective and take this dragon. Yep, just gotta be pretty careful with it. You don't know exactly who uh, was around that corner that could try and look to burst it, but they drag it out. They picked that one up. So that is the Rift Herald and the Ocean Drake picked up in the last minute or so for BLG and. They're just fine with keeping Zika in this bot side. They're saying, hey, look, we have kill pressure now onto this Tristana. If we can land that resonating strike, we know we can kill you with this Lee Sin. So why not keep it going? There's not going to be much of a difference for the virus in the mid lane. Yeah, I find that part pretty interesting, right? You you can understand why they go for the initial lane allocation of, of how they're playing around for Herald. So I want to see if they do keep it or if they send aiming back down bot after his reset. I guess in theory, Azika, you're probably decently safe from any kind of all-in coming out from Abel and Cold, but I still think it would be a bit dicey. So we are going to see BLG go back to standard lanes. That was only to try to make that play towards the top side. And we're going to see if Amy can keep pushing his advantage against Abel. As interestingly enough, we get an Immortal Shield Bow coming out for aiming. So going more of a standard AD carry, more DPS oriented build rather than that long range Lethality Varus who just, you know, gets you to half HP from afar. So aiming still wanting to step up and be the big carry for this team. Maybe looking at the rest and saying, hey, we don't have enough DPS. If this does go down into the trenches like last game, I'm going to need to be the one to step up and be that big carry. Yep, and honestly, the Mortal Shield Bow, when you look at the... Everyone, pretty much, will be jumping on top of him. It just gives him that extra little bit of survivability. If he's able to get out from the initial dive, or anyone from jumping on top of him, he's able to restain, restain himself and push back into the fight. Really do think it's a smart pickup here from Aiming, and has been, honestly, very, very smart about how he's played the game so far. You know, we mentioned the Merc Treads in the last game, now we're seeing the adaptation for the Immortal Shield Bow in this game. That's just going to be a pretty... Pretty standard start right now as we have got three minutes to this dragon spawn, so there's no one really going to be going for an objective, but just both teams posturing to try and maybe set down some kind of a siege on a tower. Yeah, BLG trying to use their prior mid and bot to contest this red buff. I think going back to the Immortal Shield Bow point, it's going to be really interesting to see how he utilizes it, because usually when viruses do go AD carry builds to go Kraken Slayer, because you think about it, if some kind of CC lands onto aiming, in OMG, our position correctly the follow-up, he should just be able to instantly die to the amount of dive that they have. So I'm really looking to how OMG, BLG's frontliners play around this and how BL aiming is able to position correctly to be able to get the most out of this item still. They are utilizing that Rift Herald and pressure well. Playing towards bot, gonna rotate towards mid right now, try and get some damage down onto this turret when next wave comes. And yeah, I, I like the early plays coming out from the side of BLG, even if it has a little, been a bit of a fiesta. Just a little bit. Just the tiniest bit, but it's LPL, so that's what we expect here. You know, no Resident Sleep or LCK in this particular uh, league. You will always be entertained, and I think that's the important thing when it comes to competitive League of Legends. It doesn't, you don't play to be the best, you play to be entertained, because it's all about the broadcast. But, OMG. Still very much in this game. They still have a lot of avenues to come back. The Night Harvester has been picked up here by the 3-0 Aki Nidalee. And you are waiting to try and just finish up that Gore Drinker for your uh, Renekton, which I feel like he's going to be able to pick up very, very soon. And just under two minutes until this dragon spawns. That's probably where we're going to see the next big fight. Everyone will have their flashes. Everyone will have their summoners available to them. And everyone will have their first mythic items. Yeah, and I think looking towards that one, BLG should definitely be favored. I want to see how close Cream gets to picking up his Divine Sunder because Zika already on his Immortal Shield Bow. Does look like Cream's going to back now, so might be able to get that. But Cream also just had to burn Flash, so not all summoner spells are going to be up for that dragon. And BLG are the ones who have pressure in both lanes right now. Gwen picking up waves on bot. Zika, another turret played around top. For OMG... I mean, the setup's kind of there, but you're once again in a situation where, okay, you have New and Cream kind of diving into a Gwen, a Leona, a Volibear, so it's going to be very tough to traverse, like we saw in the last game, and then Abel and Aki trying to do their best to whittle frontline on, on the back of it, but I feel like BLG's frontline is so strong, especially Gwen, right? We've seen so many outstanding Gwen plays if you're able to utilize this champion well, so... 
for LMG, maybe we're looking out for some kind of flank to come in to be able to get on top of aiming and take him out of the fight early on so you do have a numbers advantage for the side of OMG. Important to note as well, no Rift Maker here for Bu Bu just yet. Still waiting on a little bit of gold for that. Has got TP before this dragon spawns in 30 seconds, so should be able to go back and still be a part of the fight with that at, at item spike. And right now, everyone's just kind of posturing around these lanes, trying to gain pressure. It is BLG who are able to get the push into bot side. Of course, the tower is gone, so they will naturally be able to push down a little bit further than that, as Abel's just been soaking up waves and XP into this mid lane. Now, eight seconds till this dragon is up and running. BLG have themselves in a good position. Good spear, though, for on top of PP God. It's going to take a little bit of damage. Aki... Should be able to get himself out, throwing out the spears, seeing if he landed onto anybody, but this is where it starts to get a little dicey. There's top laners, or there is a top lane 1v1 happening as the TP comes in. Very, very deep here for the side of BLG, and maybe they're just looking to try and get Zeke on top of Aki. Aki gets flashed on. Aki goes into Zanya's as he tried to keep himself alive, but on, to fight on two fronts, Aiming gets jumped on, and Aiming has to flash himself away. But Peekaboo, there's a Renekton behind here as they trade off the flank for flank. It is the jungler, though, for OMG that has fallen so you do not have that as we see a head pull right land on the two it's going to be see Weiwei jumping out of this fight but this damage from the Gwen this damage from the Lee Sin is just too damn much he's not able to take down PP God and it is going to be four kills going over to the side of BLG they find the flank they find the priority targets and they're going to be able to find the dragon and for BLG I mean things are probably looking pretty good starting off you're like hey we're able to find this in Italy but still you left aiming all by himself it opened up for OMG to get on your backliner lucky for you though in the early game bruisers typically are able to do a lot more damage we saw the mobility coming out from all of them and then sure Abel might be alive but you have so many champions who are able to close the the gap Lee Sin Gwen Volibear all have an easy time of getting on you we're gonna see the initial pick onto Nidalee on one side but this is BLG leaving aiming vulnerable new coming in with a, a really nice flank as well and this is where it gets a bit interesting it is a 4v4 on both sides BLG wanting to start it off but then we see Cold going in for the pick and so much damage coming out from the members of BLG, Zika and Bubu especially doing so much work. And then you see Zika just easily able to close the, the gap onto Abel, and it just all turns around for the side of BLG. And Abel, you saw in that fight, he just felt so unsafe to just plant his feet and put down auto attacks. It was kind of auto attack, okay, run over here for a second. And he only got about four auto attacks off in that kind of you know extra skirmish in the 4v4. So really wasn't the advantage that OMG thought they had with their AD carry effectively doing zero damage. And really did not come out trumps for them. They do go down a dragon. They did go down to a full ace as well. Now BLG, they are starting up this Rift Herald, but oh dear, Abel forced to flash away. PP God is a little bit deep onto this one. Going to be very, very t low after this fight has happened. We're going to see the Chain of Corruption come down. The Spear lands onto Aiming. The TP comes in from Bu Bu. Now Nu is here and he's chasing everybody away, but there's good kite here. Good at distance damage from the side of BLG and no one will fall. Still, that was definitely an overcommit coming out from PP, got it right. You had to see Bubu TPing down to try to prevent that. You had to see members of BLG walk forward, aiming at to take a spear to try to make sure nothing comes out. It feels like that could have been potentially very bad for the side of BLG if OMG were finding able to where they can all commit. So... Lucky for them, that didn't happen. PP got is going to have to come from base, but OMG already defaulting towards the opposite side of the map. Abel was walking towards Red Buff to pick that one up. Cream is down in the bottom lane. He does have TP available, though. Oh, they now have vision on it. There's Rift Herald, only about 5,000 HP, now down to 3,000, so still going to be going for round two of this fight. We can see the Gwen, the Renekton now trading blows. They jump straight back in on top of aiming, and BB God's trying to kite for him. He's just running away, pops his heel to keep himself up and healthy. But look at all these low health bars, and look at the position of which OMG are in. They have no way of getting out of this. Sonic Wave does land. They jump straight in onto Abel, who has nowhere to go, no summoners to save him. They're going to turn off the turret into the mid lane as well, and and take down the Renekton. Bear better than Crocodile in this particular matchup. And that's going to be so much gold, so much advantage here for the side of BLG. They're going to be able to take everything. Yeah, taking away camps, getting down deep vision, they get it all. And that fight was was all over the place. We saw BLG actually went out on both sides of the fight. I wasn't really paying attention too much to how Nu and Aki were getting chunked so low by the members of BLG who were on Herald. But we saw Cole diving in too deep to where the rest of his members weren't able to follow up. Abel trying to close the distance, but BLG's members were able to react in time. So we're going to see here 
OMG going for New, just getting chunked solo by Gwen. Bubu actually single-handedly soloing off the other two members. And this is where the rest of OMG tries to follow up on aiming. But Zika and PP got doing really good damage control. Then Abel just jumping in to numerous members of BLG. Sure, his rocket jump does come up in time to try and get away. We talked about the high mobility coming up from the rest of BLG. They're able to follow up on you. I just think we saw Bubu do so much on Gwen in that fight. Got new Bubu. super low, got Aki super low. Yeah. So it was pretty much a 5v3 after that. He really just put down so, so much. And yes, you know, they only got a couple of kills off of it, but effectively the people Aki is, you know, the big example I think of is that, yes, he wasn't dead, but he might as well have been because he could not contribute to the fight anymore. He had to back away. And for BLG, they got themselves a 4,000 gold lead. They're looking to try and maybe make that a little bit more and clean out a 2-0 over OMG. And again, you know, it, it's it's... It's disappointing, obviously, for the side of OMG if you're if you're a fan of theirs and you're getting excited for them. But this is only one game. This is only one series, and BLG are not a bad team in whatsoever. It's just OMG. They're very new in terms of the team dynamic, and they have a lot of time to figure out what way they want to build around and how to come back after this if they do end up losing. I mean, the thing for OMG, right? They're sitting at three and one right now, so they can afford some losses. You play 16 series in the split, so you, you have a ton. Off days are going to come, good days are going to be there, days where you overperform, underperform all across the board. So, you know, I don't think there's too much bad takeaway from OMG in this series. For BLG, though, I, I think they're really performing a lot better than I could have expected. This game, especially seeing it come out and just their skirmishing and team fighting in both games has, has really been insanely on point. I really like what we've seen from the whole top half of the map uh, from BLG. And then aiming. This game, aiming is getting focused so heavily in team fights. OMG are consciously like, we will not let game one repeat itself. You're just giving the rest of the members of BLG space to get onto your key carry. Sure, Abel's jumping in, Aki's jumping in, Kareem's jumping in. They're all ext extremely squishy members. You have so much CC coming out from the members of BLG. A ton of AoE damage with things like the Gwen, uh, the Varus, the Volley Bear. So you're putting yourself in harm's way to try to get the picks you need, and BLG are just capitalizing off of it. You just see how much respect is needed to be given to BLG there by the OMG members. They try to go for a cross map play and say, hey, look, we'll steal a couple of cams. We can't fight over this dragon, but BLG are able to say, look, we'll take the dragon and we'll defend our own camps. So they don't even gain any advantage off of that. And this is where the game starts to feel like, especially for something like a Renekton that is going to struggle to get onto these backsides when you have things like the Dragon's Rage Kick, when you have the Leona to be able to peel for aiming and for Gwen. This is where it becomes very difficult for a composition that OMG have, you know, composed to do anything into this fight because they try and jump in onto it. There's so many ways that they can just be denied or just straight up, you know, you know, kicked back, right back out. Yeah, and the big thing is, I feel like at this point in the game, BLG's comp should have control over sides. We know Zika is decently far ahead of Cream, and even for Biu Biu, sure, he might not necessarily be ahead of New on the opposite side. But Gwen, with each item you get, only going to become stronger, only going to become more useful and more relevant in the matchup to where new, it's not going to mean too much. It does have the executioner's calling to try to prevent some of that sustain, but BLG can continuously turn aside, try to push out waves, get deep vision like they're doing now, then look for picks. And if that doesn't work out, you always turn towards a neutral objective once things like dragon spawn. And we've seen that they do have the superior 5v5. Oh no, they're going to be catching out. Aki is forced to flash away as they do get a headbutt pulverized now from Cold. As he tries to jump onto aiming. Speaking of jumping on, Abel finds himself on the backside. It's the exact same thing. Look at Pew Pew. He's untouched, just ripping through these hellfires. Yes, well done, OMG. You got the AD carry, but right now he is not the priority member. It's two kills to Pew Pew, and Zika and Pew Pew are just tearing, snipping, running through this OMG lineup. And they're all ending on just, yes, they're getting it, but it's just not worth it. I mean, they're so tunnel vision, right? They're, they're so upset about game one. They throw away everything to get on top of aiming. It was funny. He goes right over the, the blue buff wall. Instantly, all members of OMG are like, he must die. They follow him in. You're just opening yourself up to everyone else from BLG. For a 7K gold lead now, 23 minutes. This pretty much is going to be a free Baron. I don't think Kareem can pull up any sort of hero play. He probably will just back off like it looks like he's going to do. He doesn't and now think for so BLG, <laughs> you, you have so many <laughs> options. We already talked about how they're able to control sideways. We've seen them do a good job of that and, and get deep vision in the enemy jungle. 
And now I want to see how they play out their, their lane setup as we are going to get a replay here. Instantly Weiwei going in onto Aki. You see the members of OMG trying to follow up extremely quickly. TP comes out. But just keep your eyes on Amy because Abel jumps in, takes the blast plant over the wall. Aiming himself flashes over and it's like, cool, you, you do get him, but Cold goes down. And now you're just surrounded by all the other members of BLG. And we once again see that mobility coming out. One just easily able to E onto Abel. It, it's... OMG are just making it too easy for them, Penguin. They're just making it too easy at this point. Uh, well, that's aiming saying, there's a bit of revenge. I am still very powerful. You still have to prioritize me, but you're looking down across the board there. It's just multiple kills for the solo laners, the junglers. It's 5-1-2 on the Gwen, 3-1-6 for the Volibear, 4-0-7 for Zika on the Lee Sin. It's just, you know, there's too many threats right now, and, and I think the big problem for the side of... Actually, just before I go on, I do see a Volley Bear going for the... Oh my god, they're gonna go straight in on top of him, they're gonna see if they can take him down. Cold has got PP God in his base, as uh, PP God just gonna try and flash himself away. I was hoping to save it, but uh, not able to get the wave in time, but... We see a Zhonya's Hourglass coming out for uh, Weiwei on this Volley Bear. I'm seeing Zhonya's on a lot of different people. I didn't really expect it to see it. So uh, cool adaptations all around. I mean, this this actually used to be decently standard, especially when Volley Bear first got reworked and we'd see him in top lane a bit more. This is a variation of the build that pe some people still to this day do, right? It gives you a lot more options with your engage once you go in, putting yourself in harm's way, being able to use that Zhonya's, come out, have all your cooldowns up again, and look to be able to output more damage. So... Nothing too too crazy coming out, though it is a cool adaptation we don't really see here in the LPL all too much. But we do see on the map, Zika and Biu Biu just punishing the fact that OMG aren't able to find this engage. Oh, there is TP available though, and they're gonna be able to kind of, maybe even a double TP. No, just the one, as you got Biu Biu coming out the back side of this. New trying to find a flank, but just nowhere for him to go. Now he's a little bit isolated, trying to run away from the rest of the side of BLG. Biu Biu just zoning everybody away. The chain of corruption comes down, but New hasn't gone down just yet. There it is, the Blighted Clivers alongside the auto attack from the Lee Sid is enough to bring him to his knees. Now 4v5, Baron still available for 40 seconds. BLG honestly might look for the end right here, right now. Yeah, and I think BLG might have the tools to do it. They still have Weiwei's ultimate available. They are so strong. OMG are kind of just running into them. Looks like it might be fine for BLG. A little risky, but BLG being respectful as they all get jumped onto right now. The Stormbringer gets dropped down on top of OMG. Oh. As you can see them looking for this. As you can see Zika bouncing forward and back, just doing so much work. The cleanse is not going to be able to do anything for you, my son, as BLG will just decimate, destroy, and completely dismantle OMG 2 to nothing. And BLG have finally arrived in the summer split of 2021. They will pad their stats a little bit. They will get a couple of extra kills onto aiming as he was hard focused by OMG. But the result stands. It is OMG falling to BLG 2-0. And in that last fight, Zika Sonic Wave just hitting perfectly onto the Tristana, nothing he's able to do. Do Once he goes in, he does Buster Shot him away immediately, but Zeke is still able to follow up on the damage and get right back in there with what looked like his W, maybe even combined with, with a Flash. So really nice mechanics coming out from the side of BLG, just nice team fighting overall. They knew how much they could force. And I mean, it, it got to a point where OMG did just fall too far behind that, right? It's like you have to look for those fights, but you aren't able to win them. So it, it was a little bit rough, but BLG at the end of the day, I think phenomenal early game. Uh, really exceptional team fighting coming into uh, game one and game two and finally picking up another win now going to be sitting at two and three making their way up alongside teams like Sooning and LGD still not over OMG who they just beat but right getting back on track towards that playoff goal which Weiwei did talk about before this game yep still looking and searching for that playoff goal of course just under a third of their matches played. Of course, you'd rather be in a slightly stronger position, but a great showing from BLG. Nonetheless, they really look like they've come back and, you know, made a much better case for themselves as one of our top or middling teams, if you will. And for OMG, look, it happens. Like we said, there are bad games. There are good games. There's still a, a you know, a new dynamic for the team. They're still fig figuring out. And I still think there's a lot of positivity for OMG as they move forward throughout the split because, you know, these, these losses will happen there's just so many good teams in lpl 
Yeah, and also surprised to see the damage graph of Kareem coming out on top for the side of OMG. He really is this, the superstar player that OMG are having to rely on to be able to pull off a lot of these wins. On the opposite side, though, very much a team effort this time around from BLG. A bit surprised Aiming is still able to top the damage graph from how heavily he was focused later on. No relevant. And, but <laughs> I, I think... Bubu this series, really good in both games, uh, did a phenomenal job. Zika showing up a lot better game two on this Lee Sin, looked extremely comfortable. And I still think the only big question mark for the side of BLG is PP God. Like he has good moments, but he also has a lot of moments where he puts his team in potential like danger, like we did see in that second game. But apparently we don't have to talk about PP God because Zika is the MVP. Not all too surprising. The guy was phenomenal on this Lee Sin. Really, really was. 7 0 7 and 70% kill participation. A lot of sevens there winning the jackpot on the slots, but just honestly able to facilitate his team, get himself, as he said, into positions that were just so annoying and difficult to deal with for the side of OMG. And for BLG, it's great signs for them because I think a lot of people were questioning whether or not Zika would have the the same level of, of play as some of the other, you know, top ten mid laners that we have in the league. Yeah, definitely. Going to be looking at Zika going forward for BLG if they want to keep improving. Yeah, well, we will go to a quick break. And when we return, we will have our match of the week. FBX versus RNG, a rematch of the spring 2021 finals. You will not want to miss it.